Hello everyone. Well, so I'm super, super excited to present you with an old friend of mine, OG Crypto Artist. We've been here for quite a while now, and I would like Leela here to uh, talk a little bit with us about our experience for the past. How long, man? Four years, maybe? Four years, yeah. yeah. I met, I met Gus in a telegram chat with a bunch of Mexicans, Japanese people, English people, fucking real Canadians. Real, real, uh, real people there, right? Some, some, yeah. we, we, we hooked up in the, in the rare Pepe chat, uh, pretty much the whole conversation of crypto art was going on in that chat. Yeah, I, well, that's how it all started. So we were just basically meeting people online. Actually, it took us like maybe a year, more than a year, to, to meet live in a, some event in New York, I believe. Um, but before that, everything was online. And that what people call nowadays NFT crypto art, that wasn't even a thing. We were just tokenizing memes. And the first didn't even have the name crypto art. No, 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 yeah. That, 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 that didn't happen back then, back in 2016. So we were just having fun with me, and that's how it all started. I would like Quilla here to share with us how he tokenized his first piece of design or me, and uh, how he got involved. So I, um, I discovered crypto art just by being on Twitter and seeing um, basically garbage sale kids, like trading cards, with, like, like crypto celebrities and stuff like that. Huh? Yeah, I do too. Like, so it's like garbage sale kids, but it was making fun of crypto personalities. What about these DJ Stephen phenomena that started in those days? What, 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 what's, your, uh, what's your involvement with, with, with that? Whole thing about DJ Tepe. DJ Tepe was like the first DJ that was tokenized on the blockchain. And maybe Freela knows him better. Maybe she can talk about it a little. So D DJ Tepe is a guy, he's, he's a mean, my he's a man, and he's he dies since, like, in the physical. He'll live on the metaverse, of course, on the blockchain. But DJ Tepe used to be at all the conferences. Uh, he's been booked to speak and all that stuff like that. But uh, he was. He was put into the blockchain using sorcery and magic and all these like the potion uh, vitamins, and we we put him. Me and Joe Rooney uh, tokenized. We, I tokenized CJ Pepe, and I was like, "Yo, we need to make it so we can give access to exclusive music using this." So this was back in 2016, and nobody like had any of it. We were like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" So so we. Uh, we did it. We, we used the private SoundCloud page, and I put, like, exclusive beats and music I had put on there, and I started selling the uh, DJ Pepe token. Gave it a, I gave it away. Honestly, DJ Pepe was a very, like, he was, like, a misogynist. Like, that was a character, and he was a misogynist of the blockchain, to be honest with you. And uh, so Mr. DJ Pepe, a lot of times, would be gifted to the women, and then <laughs> the regular people had to buy him. But... That was kind of like the hype of it all. <laughs> I remember DJ Pepe was invited to the first Rare AF, right? He was speaking at the first NFT festival that ever happened called Rare AF back in January 2018. What was the role of Rare Pepe in that festival, man? Yeah, Rare Pepe blew it. Yeah, Rare Pepe blew that festival up. Um, and I actually had DJ Pepe uh, with a Six foot cardboard cutout, and I had him on stage with like all these like very important like people from like trustees and like auction houses, and then there's this like meme of DJ Pepe just standing over just like this, and everybody's like, "What the fuck is this meme up here doing?" And then I had a microphone like this, and I was just waiting like the back, but nobody could see me, and the answer questions of DJ Pepe, and all around the world, like. And like all these like like super like art people and like you know like the blockchain people were there and they were all like what the fuck is going on right now? Okay, well another about history. I don't know if you could talk about there's so many people all the time asking what's the role of musicians in the in the NFT industry in the crypto art scene. 
So there are a lot of people making all sorts of different genres of music, and they they always come in with these questions. I think you're the best person that can answer those those questions. So that's what you do to the music. So I've been I've been fighting to get the uh, musicians I know on using blockchain and stuff like that for quite many years. Um, I used to have a podcast called Art on the Blockchain Podcast, and then I got a music chat. If anybody's in Telegram, look up Crypto Music Official. I think that's our chat. Um, but we we talk about crypto and music all right. Um, basically, I've been tokenizing my beat and my art together and, and animating it and putting on Super Rare. I recently sold the first ever rap song on Super Rare with uh, number one rapper Benny the Butcher from Griselda Records. Um, we sold that uh, last in October. Um, I think it was like $4,000 or so. And we have some more uh, joints going out actually with more rappers uh, soon. Um, so I do some of that stuff and then I also do some like I use like Rarible or possibly like Mint Base or something and then or even like Counterparty uh, and use the like exclusive content and just put out like a piece of art and maybe make it like 10 pieces or 20 to 5 pieces, sell it, you get the NFT and then you get access to like exclusive music or I did a, I did an album called Sound Money which is all about Bitcoin. I released it in April and uh, that, it made a lot of noise in the Bitcoin community and um I put an NFT out just recently, actually, where you get the NFT and you get a free download uh, of the Bandcamp album and all that stuff. So, but, but, but what, what would you say is the way to go to music and the industry that are doing music and they won't stop open I don't think I don't think any I don't think the blockchain is prepared for everybody to join and start tokenizing music. Cause I don't think we're that 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 we're not that futuristic yet with it. But we are at the level where you can put like art pieces up on like a super rare or um, Nifty Gateway or one of these other ones, Rarible, and um, you know just mix like the art and the music. I think that's dope. But that's also like the exclusive content you can do with Rarible. Um, it's dope. Anybody can use Rarible.com, and then you can go to um, like Mint Base. Mint Base costs a little bit more. It's a little bit more probably like a little more knowledge involved, but you can do it on Mint Base too. Um, there's a lot of other ones too that are like all in the come up right now. Uh, I mean, there's been student music and music coin, all those places that are trying to do where like three people collaborate, instant payouts to smart contracts, but that still doesn't, that, that's not working yet. We're not there yet at all. Um, the music industry has to subscribe to that point, honestly, because indie artists that don't, that only push like, that got like five album streams are not going to go on the blockchain and start selling music. That's not how it's going to work. You need musicians to come on the blockchain and get this shit going. No offense. Anybody can make music and anybody can put art and put on a blockchain. But to get like the whole wheel spinning, we need like, you know, big artists coming on the blockchain and doing it and subscribing to, yeah, all right, I'm going to fill out these split sheets. Every time you do a song, you do split sheets and the producer gets this, the rapper gets this, and you, you know, the guitar player gets this, et cetera. The engineer might get some. That could all like happen quickly. Put a boom, 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 put in a smart contract, put on a blockchain. But unfortunately, we're not at a point where that's quite working yet. Um, hopefully, we get there, but we're not there yet. There's been a lot of experimenting with it. I've experimented with it. It's a cool concept, but we're not there yet. Yeah, the experimentation is happening a lot. But as you said, like the traditional music industry is not quite there. What I see for musicians doing a lot is playing with tokens, uh, doing music for short videos, for short NFTs, and then of course, if those are, um, uh, uh, they go along with like a with, like nice music release, that definitely is more attractive to collectors. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, you guys got one of those videos queued up? Which one? I don't know, the, the four videos in the thumb drive? Can you turn it up? So this is like an NFT music video I did. It's a little stretched out, not proportionate right now, but... And there's a tiny back one. So 
So it's just a short loop. It's about a minute long piece. You can't upload more than 50 megabytes to the um, to most of these uh, NFT platforms. So you, you have to learn how to compress video and do a lot of wild shit. The first said uh, LSB. It's a I got a I got a mind altering currency series where. I take drug references and like put like acid and shit like that with Bitcoin. So like you're dropping, you're not dropping acid, you're dropping Bitcoin. So this one's on Super. This one sold for like fifteen hundred dollars a couple months ago. It's a one of one NFT. Nobody will ever have this beat. Nobody will ever have this art. Um, so that's where you kind of get them the idea when you're selling. Go to the last one. And this is my newest one I just put out on Super Rare. And it's called uh, Bitcoin Guys. Because everybody's kind of disguised in Bitcoin. And you see, he, he's got the acid too on here. I, I always try to put a little Bitcoin acid in most of my joints. All right, you can take it down. So that's that's kind of what I've been doing with Super Rare is putting those one of one like art mixed with with music animated on there. Um, with Rareable, I do stuff more like unlockable stuff, like more more prints of that. And then um, that's pretty much the main two platforms I'm using right now for for like the for the NFTs. Yeah, I mean that is this uh, an increasing number of platforms. Oh, they're out there. Definitely, a lot of them they tend to look the same, but they are not too too, too equal. And this is just the point that there's there's a, there's, a, there's room for musicians. As, as you mentioned, it's not uh, gaining the same momentum as a visual artist because it's, it's just a different it's a different way of doing it. But there's definitely room for for this. And another question that I wanted to for you to answer is how do you see the Bitcoin scene in the NFT? Do you think that like, it's going to go back in some form to Bitcoin, or is it just definitely pushed over the market and it's never going back? So, so I'm a, I'm definitely more of like a Bitcoin person. Um, I definitely, I definitely took me a couple of years to like, I was making Bitcoin art, Bitcoin tokenization, like with XTP and stuff, and I really like. Off that going on Ethereum for a long time. The reason I finally decided to start issuing tokens on Ethereum, like like a lot, like this year I have been, is because the market literally shifted there. It's there right now. I can still take the Ethereum and cash out for Bitcoin if I want. Um, is it going to go back to Bitcoin? The problem is this. I think Bitcoin is best for high value art or high value assets because, in my opinion, Bitcoin will. It, in my opinion, Bitcoin has the best survival chance of any blockchain. By far, the market has already priced that in. You can see where the you know Ethereum is for like six hundred dollars and Bitcoin is uh, twenty thousand dollars, and and it, it is twice as much Ethereum, or it's four times as much Ethereum out there. Um, I think the same happens to me. Like it is interesting to, to hear that it took us some time to realize that there's nothing wrong with working with a different blockchain. It seems like more convenient. Yeah. But we all, we, we both at least come from this uh, Bitcoin school of thought, and uh, it definitely was. We were hesitant to just like, start tokenizing on Ethereum. But the platform for you on Ethereum right now works better, but that doesn't mean that you can always change your savings to Bitcoin. Yeah. So it just works, works, works more than Ethereum. And it, it keeps Bitcoin as sound money and store of value, and yet you, Ethereum. 
let the thing and be like the experimental thing where like, all right, we're going to do all this shit over here, but at least keep the Bitcoin over here. Now, with that all said, um, there are all a few of us like working on some Bitcoin like NFT shit where like we want some high value like Bitcoin shit to come back over like with some of the, the Bitcoin artists and because I know some Bitcoin artists that won't even that are like well known they won't they won't publish on Ethereum. Um, they just won't. I think that's like a huge team. I think people. I was there though, so I understand. Like, I, I did it too. I, even though I was like one of the first people on Super Rare, uh, Super Rare I, I published it on Ethereum for that. But then I, I published a couple, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna fall back for a while. And I just had, I just actually got out of crypto art for like a year and just focused fully on music. I came back into crypto art this summer, and um. And I reevaluated everything. You know what I mean? I'm like, all right, this is what the scene is. All right, this is happening. The money's here. The, everybody's talking about this. How, how, how do you see that has been changing in the past three years? I mean, how do you see the scene right now at the end of 2020? I think it's very different. Well, first of all, the artists have gotten 1,000 times better. Than when, when we started, we were just doing like, the most shitty memes. Yeah, we were making like the most shitty memes ever. Like, it was like a joke. So now, like the real, like super crazy artists are involved. We don't really talk about this. We don't play in the bus stage. We got Charles, Martial, and Frankie. We don't yeah. talk about this. That's right. Like, like, the nowadays most. Uh, it's like the motion, the motion graphics and stuff like that. Those are things like the 3D art. Those things are like coming in crazy. Like people from Hollywood and shit are like, oh shit, I can just sit in my cubicle and not have to worry about what this person tells me to make. I can make my own design and sell it. For fucking ten grand, okay. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, people are making more money. There's more talented people now. Definitely, everything's changing. But like, I, 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 we just anyone that still wants to tokenize on Bitcoin can still do it. But most of the market is going to be. It's not that you can not keep on tokenizing on Bitcoin. It's not that everything's happening on the field, man. It's actually really exciting what's happening there. A lot of creativity, a lot of new people, a lot of very talented illustrators, animators, uh, you name it. There's not enough, um, what's that going to say? I don't know what I'm going to say. Oh, there's not, a, yeah, there's not enough, um, there's not enough people involved, there's not enough developers in Bitcoin, in NFTs. Number one, because there's not. But number two, because Bitcoiners generally don't want to support some that are on Bitcoin. Like, that's just how it is. And, like, that's been a thing, even when we were heavy in the XTP community, like, Greg Maxwell and those people would go on Reddit, and these are, like, Bitcoin core developers, and just rail at the shit we were doing. Like, you're spamming the network. No, they were paying us. Yeah, yeah, for, 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 the, for the Bitcoin mod, uh, Colin Party was seen like as an attack on Bitcoin. And that definitely uh, that diminished uh, the, the, the community. In the, yeah. I, I would like to see Bitcoin take some of it back. I don't think the whole thing is going to go back there. I don't, I don't even know, like, Ethereum's definitely winning right now. I don't know if Ethereum's going to win. Like, you've got, like, other blockchains too that are doing it, like Flow and Wax and all these other ones. So everybody, oh, kind of, everybody's doing NFTs because everybody knows that's where the fucking money is. That's where the marketing is. Like, it's not a fucking joke. Like, that's what, of course you're doing NFTs, whatever blockchain. You rebrand, you, you had zero market cap three years ago, and they're like, NFT, what the fuck? And then you hire a fucking dope artist to make some NFTs. You're like, everybody throw the telegram, throw 50 people up, throw the telegram, whoo, thousand dollars. Like, Talking, like what we do. Like. Well, 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 what I want to take out of this conversation is basically that the excitement both of the new guys coming, like the guys we have there in the backstage. I hope we can get them uh, after this interview with you. And the OGs like Krila uh, doing tokens and real, rare memes in 2016, and the excitement coming. Gone down a bit. Like, it just has grown, and I think this, from here on, it's just going to keep on growing. It's going to keep on getting more interesting. More talented people are going to be on board. And I, I really excited to see more and more of this because it's just going to grow. Yeah, I, I definitely think the scene's not going anywhere. 
I, I think the problem that we're going to run into, though, is we need more collectors. That's what I think. Yeah, and they are coming. They are coming. Definitely, there are always more artists and collectors, but like the amount of collectors that have uh, come on board in the last now in 2020, it's like a yeah. super rare. That's crazy. And I think you've got to shout the collectors out because the collectors are really helping. Yeah. Push Otherwise, that's why they're the one pushing this, this whole scene. Like, without collectors, you don't have the artists coming. You don't have the fine artists coming. You don't have the underground artists coming. You don't have the So, big up. Big up to all you motherfuckers putting your thing. Ooh. Thank you. And, and also, most artists are collectors as well. Like, that's yeah, true. Like, like we we are all collectors of our the artists that we appreciate. Like the Met, I shout out to, to the Mexican artists that are doing amazing stuff. But in between us, we are always we understand the value of the things that we are doing, and we are also collectors. So you you are you are welcome to to join the club. Join up and go get, go go on any any streaming service that you use for music and download. Sound Money, Sound Money by DJ J. Strilla. It features Rome Street, Uncle John, and some other people on there. If you're a hip hop head, you'll like it. If you're not, you'll still like it because you're going to learn some shit on there. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Gus. Hey, thank you, man.